In multiple regression, there may be many possible explanatory variables that you're interested in. How do you decide which ones to include in your final model? So one option is to use a procedure called backwards regression. So the idea here is that if some of the variables aren't useful, then we should simplify the model to make accurate predictions, but with as few variables as possible. Um, but because of the associations between variables that can change things, we should only remove one at a time. So basically, it's a three-step process. If any of the variables have p-values above your chosen alpha level, you're going to remove the single variable with the largest p-value. Step two, you refit the model with the remaining explanatory variables. And then you just repeat steps one and two until all variables have a p-value that is small. So here we're looking at an example where we're trying to predict the average salaries of um, graduates from different colleges based on different features of those colleges. So for the starting group of variables, we have admittance rate, four-year graduation rate, total cost per year in-state, and total cost per year out-of-state. And we're trying to decide which of those variables to include. So this is multiple regression, so I'm going to do analyze fit model. That allows me to have multiple explanatory variables. Average salary is what I want to predict, so I'm putting that in the Y box. And then I have admittance rate, four-year graduation rate, total cost in-state, total cost out-of-state. I'm going to put all of those in the construct model effects box and then click run. So I can see the R squared for this model, 0.4659. That's giving me an idea of how much variability is being explained. And if I go down to the parameter estimates table, I can see the p-values for each of these variables. So this model with all of our variables included is explaining almost half of the variability in average salary. R squared was 0.4659. Um, but it looks like some of these variables aren't useful, right? We have two different variables here, four-year graduation rate and total cost in state, that have large p-values. So we're going to look at just the one with the highest p-value. We're always going to do them only one at a time. And this one has the highest p-value. This is total cost per year in state. Uh, maybe that one is redundant. Maybe it's giving the same information as out of state. Um, so it's not really a helpful variable here. And I'm just going to make a note to remind you that we remove only one at a time. So I'm going to remove that variable. There's a couple different ways to do this. You could go back to the beginning and do analyze fit model all over again um, and just include all of the variables except for in-state cost. Um, but the easiest way is actually to come up here to the effect summary. Um, so you can actually see these are sorted in order by their p-value. So we've got the largest p-value down here for in-state cost. I'm just going to select that one. So once it turns blue, I'm going to click remove. And again, to emphasize, I'm only removing just this one for now. And this recalculates everything. Um, I've got my new R squared for the new model, 0.4657. So fairly similar to what it was before. Also notice that my p-values have changed a little bit. So R squared for this one is down just a little bit, but very close, 0.4657. This p-value has changed slightly. It was 0 0.3007 before. Um, so the p-value has changed slightly. And in some cases, it could even go from a very large p-value to a very small p-value. And so we have to be careful. That's why we only remove one variable at a time. Um, but we do have a large p-value here, so I'm going to remove this variable, the four-year graduation rate. So I'm going back to jump, and I'm going to do this the easy way. Um, I'm going up to the effect summary, select four-year graduation rate, and click remove. And it does the analysis again. Here I've got my new R squared, 0.4597. And now I see that all of the p-values for the remaining variables are small. So R squared is 0.4597 here, and both of my remaining variables are significant, and so that's when I stop. So even if these hadn't been quite this small, um, as long as the p-values were below whatever alpha level you set, um, you would stop at this point. So notice when you compare the R squared values, R squared is actually similar in all three of these models, right? So taking out those extra variables really hasn't done too much to the accuracy of our predictions. Um, we're still getting about the same amount of variability explained, um, but the final model uses fewer predictors. 
So in general, if we can keep the same explanatory power um, with fewer predictors, it makes things a little bit less complicated. That's something that we would like to do. So backward regression, this is one procedure that we can use to simplify the model. Um, just keep in mind that this is all based on significance tests. Um, it's really a very formulaic approach to this. In the real world, you would be taking into account your content knowledge of whatever it is you're trying to study as well. Um, but this just gives you an idea of how to select a model.